What's the unit for power? You don't know? I didn't ask you a question, the what is the unit for power? And it's a joke I often play on my students in the classroom. But actually, what is power? Today we're going to be discussing the concept of electrical power using a simple circuit and these lights. Stay tuned! And before we start, please remember, press the subscribe button, and if this is helpful for you, consider buying me a coffee. The link is in the description below. Let's start. When you buy a globe in the store, you might look for a certain level of brightness and you might look to its wattage. So a 75 watt globe will be brighter than a 60 watt globe, but they're not exactly connected. So for example, if I have a 75 watt globe and have a level of brightness, let's say here in Australia, if I take that very same globe and plug it into a supply in the US, I'm gonna get a different level of brightness. Secondly, an LED such as this can actually have a much brighter output of light, even though its wattage will be significantly smaller compared to let's say an incandescent type of globe. So what is power? If you've studied mechanics, you should know already that power is simply the rate of energy transformation. So if I pick up a light globe, I'm changing its gravitational energy in this case. Simply also, if I drop it, I change its kinetic energy. And the rate at which that happens is power. And so if I lift it slowly, that has low power, but if it lifted really fast, that's high power. It's the rate of change of energy. So in an electrical circuit, it's the same principle. What is the transformation of energy? In this case, we have is electrical energy by way of the voltage applied, and therefore we have a current passing through a resistor under this, this light bulb over here. And as a result, that resistor transforms the electrical energy into heat energy and light energy. And that is the concept of power. How fast is that transformation taking place? Before we go on, I want to highlight the fact that the transformation here is not just in terms of light. This light globe is actually quite warm. And so what is happening here is, is that the electrical energy is converting to not only light energy, but also heat energy. In fact, in this case, this bulb probably is converting 90% of its energy into heat energy, which automatically addresses the point why LEDs are more efficient. You can have a lower amount of power, a lower amount of energy transformation, but still brighter if most of that is actually converted into light energy and very minimal amount of heat energy, whereas the incandescent is the reverse. Now, before we move on, let's define the term brightness and change it actually to the word intensity. What do I mean by that? Well, the amount of energy transformation that's taking place here in terms of electrical energy to light and heat energy is actually represented by this globe here. And you can see all that energy transformation is spread out over a very small area, namely the filament. Now that energy of course is going out and the total energy that's coming out is going to be the same. But now what we're doing here by putting the dome on is we're going to spread out that energy over a much larger surface area. And intensity, which is the amount of energy per unit area or energy per square meter, you can see now that energy is now spread over a larger area and as a result, the intensity drops. So the energy is still the same here as it is here, but the intensity drops because we're now over a larger surface area. So what determines the power of an electrical circuit or the rate of energy transformation? So of course there are three variables we need to consider when we're discussing power. The first is the voltage, the work done or the energy per unit charge. The second variable is the current, the rate of flow of charge. And finally, if the light globe's resistance. Then that resistor will determine the amount of current flowing through this circuit. What is power? Power is the rate of energy transformation or the work done per time. You can see now I have those variables in my formulas. So if I multiply my voltage by my current, I end up getting the work over to the charge multiplied by the charge over time. You see now the Q's cancel out and I get VI is my power. So in other words, my formula for power ends up being simply VI. Well, that should make sense. The amount of energy you have is ultimately determined by the number of charges that carry a certain amount of energy. But because of Ohm's law, V equals IR, 
I now have two alternate relationships that I can incorporate as well. I have V squared over R and I squared R. So now we have three formulas for power, V squared over R, I squared R, and of course VI. So let's now examine what happens if I change various variables. So here in my light globe, I've taken the dome off so that we can see the intensity of my light quite clearly, and I'm going to change the voltage. If I drop the voltage to a factor of a half, what happens to the intensity? Well, it doesn't drop by a half. Why? Well, first of all, my voltage has decreased by a factor of two, but my current, as a result of Ohm's law, has also decreased by a factor of two. And so VI now becomes, as a result, a quarter of our initial conditions. And that's consistent with the concept of V squared over R as our formula for power, because obviously R hasn't changed, but our V has by a half, and squaring that gives us a quarter of the power output. Now, what if I change the resistance? Let's say this resistance is twice of my initial globe here. How has the power output changed? Well, in this case, it's definitely half. Why? Well, the voltage hasn't changed, but because my resistance has increased by a factor of two, my current has decreased by a factor of two. As a result, the power, VI, is also re reduced by a factor of two. Lastly, let's explore complex circuits. And we're gonna look at series and parallel circuits. Here is a series circuit, and you can see our intensity has significantly dropped. By how much? In this case, our voltage is still the same. It's 12 volts. But by increasing our resistance by adding two bulbs, we now have twice the amount of resistance. So my current has decreased by a factor of two. But because of the fact that this energy is shared now across two globes, the voltage drop across this bulb and this bulb is half of the initial supply, assuming that they're roughly identical. They're not totally identical, you can see they're slightly different in brightness. But the point here is, is that it is now shared. And so as a result, the power output of this globe is a quarter of what it was originally. The point, point being is that the power output over here is not a constant value. The amount of current that is drawn from this power output is obviously dependent on the resistances you apply to it. So what happens when we do a parallel circuit? You can see my single globe is on a light because I have a voltage and a resistance. Now, what if I now attach one in parallel? You see automatically this thick globe doesn't change. In other words, the power output has stayed consistent. But now I have another globe of roughly equal brightness or equal intensity. And that means that the power output, in other words, the energy transformation that's taking place, Overall, the whole circuit has actually increased, in fact, by a factor of two. Now, clearly, by adding another globe, that's obvious, but can we look at it from a mathematical perspective? My voltage is still the same, the voltage here is still the same, and the voltage here is still the same, but by adding another resistor in parallel, the effective resistance hasn't doubled, it actually is halved, which means, by way of P equals VI, if my resistance is halved, my current has doubled, as in the total current. And so, as a result, the power output, the power transformation, increases by a factor of two. Well, I hope that has been helpful for you in understanding the whole idea of electrical power. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and buy me coffee if this has been helpful for you. My name is Paul from Physics High. Bye for now.